Shut up and sit down. Hi, hello. My name is Cyber Guru. Thank you for watching. So hopefully you've watched the introduction of this series. And this is the first part of a, a tutorial series on how to do computer-aided manufacturing. This specific part of the video is going to be around the CAM operations that you can use to produce the results you're looking for. Now, just a reminder, uh, CNC work is a subtractive manufacturing process, which means you are removing material from, from some sort of stock or base. Unlike 3D printing, which is an additive manufacturing process, which is actually building the material up from some uh, non-existent base, essentially. So uh, in, the, in the CAM operations, really the number one uh, requirement for you is to choose tool paths that actually lead you to remove the material in a way that r reveals or, or produces the outcome that you want in the final part. And there's lots of different strategies around this and I'm not going to dive into all of them. I'm simply in this video just going to talk about the different type of operations you can use and some pointers on some things to do uh, with uh, hobbyist grade machines like the X-Carve and uh, Shapeoko. Alright, so let's cut over to the CAM workspace. Okay, so here we are in Fusion. What you see in front of you is the part that I created. It is just a rectangle with rounded corners uh, with a circle depression and a rectangular depression in the middle that we will use for the pocket operations. So I've created uh, the two primary tool paths that you'll use as a CNC machinist, which is the uh, what is known as a profile or a contour and a pocket. So in this case, the contour is exactly what it says. It follows the contour of the path that you specified. So in this case, we specified the outside path of the part. And you can see here we have multiple depths turned on. So it goes down and increments all the way down to the bottom. Uh, so there's not a whole lot of magic here. It's just that simple. Now for hobbyist grade machines, I do recommend that you do not set your depth of cut too deep. Uh, in this case, it's I think set at a tenth of an inch, which is uh, fairly aggressive depending on the type of uh, material you're cutting in. Um, if it's a you know really hard wood, you don't want to really go that deep. But um, that's that. So next is the pocket for the circular operation here and the way Fusion has done it is I've ramped in a helical ramp here and then it swoops from the inside to the outside and it just cuts the material out like that. Uh, and so what pockets do is they remove all of this material instead of just following a simple tool path. If we were to do a contour or profile around this particular thing it would only remove uh, kind of just a circle inside of the circle if you want to look at it that way. So. The next thing is a 2D pocket on the rectangular, and I wanted to show this uh, as separate from the circle because uh, the, there's something you need to know, uh, make sure you know about the tool paths that are created. In this case, let me turn on the simulate, and then I'm going to turn on the stock, and then I'm going to jump to the end here. Um, so, and I will, let me uh, put on transparent so that I can show you here. So I'm going to zoom in. So it is a square circle, but you'll notice here that the, the material that is cut away is actually rounded. And if I turn transparent off, you can see that. So it is not cutting to the true dimensions of the square that is on the inside of the material. And that is because the tool that we have chosen and all the tools that you choose for CNC actually are round. So they're only going to be able to cut to a certain uh, radius on the inside corners. Uh, so you'll never be able to get a true 90, de 90 degree corner with CNC with really any uh, device that you use. Uh, so in this case we used a quarter inch bit so the, the, the amount of roundedness if you will is fairly exaggerated relative to the size of the box. Um, but that's just something to keep in mind when you're using CNC to make sure that if you have these inside corners uh, that they are either rounded over automatically um, or if you're trying to you know, fit a part or something that the, the part itself is also rounded over. Um, if you want a nice square round corner on the inside, um, there's not a whole lot you can do with CNC. Even the smallest bits like a 16th or a 32nd are still going to have some rounded components to it. So just something to keep in mind. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that short little video describing the different uh, cam operations that you can do on your model. Again, they were uh, the profile and the pocket. Those are the two most frequent that you will use. Other ones like bore and drilling and whatnot are uh, much less frequent depending on what type of you know devices you're making. But certainly uh, profiling and and pocketing are the most uh, frequent ones that I used. And just I uh, want to show you real quick, I use Fusion for a lot, uh, but I've also uh, recently started using um, Easel from Inventables just because there's certain things that it does that are just a lot easier. So I create a lot of cutting boards here, and I'll show you. Uh, this is the one I've created recently. 
using and I know the lights are a little uh, a little bright you can see this is an inlay um, and I'll turn it this way it might be a little bit easier so the inlay here I created the pocket then I did the profile on the inlay and smushed them together and sanded it uh, this was actually just a profile uh, that I did inside of easel because uh, it didn't have a I didn't want to pocket this necessarily um, and then this was just the outline as well and then the other one that I did same same another inlay cutting board you can see here um, a pocket and then a profile around the outside very simple not a whole lot of magic there in this case the pocket included some these internal elements here and so the the, the reason I bring these two things up is because it was very important uh, to understand that when you're doing the pocketing and the profiling on the inlay that your tool uh, that you choose your end mill that you choose is an appropriate size to make these corners um, and let me zoom in here Let's see if I can uh... so in this case let's go right there so um, these corners right here uh, these inside corners are the most important ones uh, for the for the milling operation because that's the tightest radius you have on this entire picture. Now on this particular one, there's some inside corners down here that were very problematic. And let me uh, zoom in, or I should say focus in um, on these. Um, so those required me to use a 16th inch uh, end mill to do the, the pocket and the inlay, uh, the profile. So because I was using a 16th inch end mill, and you can see there's a quite a lot of material there to remove that um, it, it took a fair amount of time. It was about 50 minutes or so to pocket that out, but it wasn't too horrible, but you know how it is. So this is the first part of a multi-part video, and the next part is going to be focused in on end mills and the different types of uh, end mills, cutters that you can use to make whatever it is that you're trying to make. So uh, please stay tuned and look for the next uh, part in the video. And if, again, any questions or comments, leave them down below. Um, as always, uh, you know, if you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Certainly, if you don't like the video, give it a thumbs up anyway, just because. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Again, very important these days to do that. And then uh, we'll see everyone soon. Thanks.